the Yamaha Stratoliner, it's a damn shame after experiencing a machine like this to know that the future is electric because there's something about a V-twin air-cooled engine of this size, 1900cc, that uh, just puts a smile on your face. This here is a 2005, huge fan of Yamaha cruisers and this is top of the line. Stratoliner Deluxe, the ultimate in the star line of Yamaha cruisers. Stay tuned for a complete in-depth review of this incredible motorcycle. Zdravi, dobrodošli, bon dia, bienvindo, servus, willkommen, buenos dias, bienvenidos, greetings riders and welcome to another Pegasus Motorcycle Tours and Consulting Review. Yours truly, Nick here with an incredible 2005 Yamaha Stratoliner. This is the top of the line in the Yamaha Star line of cruisers. It's the largest engine, the most featured, the most deluxe kind of luxury cruiser and it really shows. I've been looking for this bike for quite a while and it turns out actually one of my a good friends, uh, a client turned friend, Sergei is the owner of this motorcycle and all of its 80,000 miles, 80,000 worry free smile filled miles. Sergei, you might know from my review of the Cross Challenge, that's the bike he test rode and then bought after crashing it and breaking four six by eight inch uh, pillars that hold a guardrail on the infamous Palomar Mountain with his body and with my bike and still continued the day and actually I think went to hockey afterwards so pretty incredible man uh, turned good friend and this is his bike and I've had the pleasure to get to know it uh, I always wanted to buy one as you know I've reviewed Yamaha Warrior also from the Starline that's a 1700 cc motor and I love that bike just an amazing muscle cruiser this year's a little bit different it's a bigger motorcycle bigger engine engine, heavier bike and much tamer when it comes to the performance but this is the ultimate in the Yamaha star line in those years at least. So let me give you a full breakdown of this bike, what I like and what I dislike about it. Like I said I've been looking for one for a while just because I'm a huge fan of the huge big V-twin especially the air-cooled stuff so I have a custom cruiser made here in Oceanside California that's an American Eagle Talon also a 113 cubic inch aka 1850 cc motor air-cooled 45 degree v-twin sns engine this here is a 48 degree v-twin also air-cooled and there's a lot of technology on this bike that was new for yamaha at the time it's a big heavy cruiser five speed motorcycle but uh, the delivery is very very crisp and predictable and it makes it a joy to ride it actually calms me down it's a perfect kind of a uh, weekend beach cruiser on the coast just take it easy go grab a coffee have a drink see some friends it uh, actually got rid of my headache when I when I took off just because it's very peaceful relaxing ride although nothing lacks when it comes to power and performance on this bike speaking of power you get a 48 degree air-cooled v-twin Yamaha motor pushing out a hundred and twenty three horsepower no, I'm sorry, that's the torque. 123 foot-pounds of torque and 99 horsepower. Pretty incredible. The torque is just ridiculous. And you get that at 4,250 RPM. Super low, and that's the beauty of the twins, and I love that about twin motorcycles. Just the engine is... is uh, torque heavy let's say it needs it it's a heavy bike sitting around 750 some pounds 56 pounds i believe dry weight so it's quite heavy which surprised me a little bit because this is a belt drive motorcycle unlike the honda vtx 1800 another motorcycle i reviewed which is a shaft driven motorcycle this is a belt drive bike so i'm 5'8 172 centimeters a flat footed completely comfortable on this bike it's actually quite maneuverable when you're doing u-turns when you're lane splitting like we have here in california and luckily now starting elsewhere if you are in a state considering lane splitting i had a two-part video on lane splitting why it's such a great law and how interestingly enough much safer it is for riders and then how to do it properly and respectfully and effectively so take a look at the playlist if you're interested there's a lot to learn and experience is the key but uh, it's good to get some theory before you 
do that between cars, especially on a big motorcycle like this. So I haven't had any issues with that. And uh, the stance, it's quite comfortable. As you can see, you get this uh, mustache handlebar, uh, inch 25 thick with all the cables hidden inside and it pulls back and you're sitting nice against this beautiful removable backrest. Speaking of removable backrest, to get that classic look, what Yamaha did very intelligently is make the windshield and the passenger backrest removable by key. You have a key, plug the key in, remove the thing, and the bike gets a whole new set of lines. Just gorgeous. I love these leather saddlebags as well. They're actually very, very spacious, lockable, match to the key, of course. So that big V-twin 48 degree engine uh, has a lot of interesting new technology. So for example, it's powered by, I believe, 43 millimeter Mikuni injection, 12 hole, two directional injection, in that hemispherical style head. So you get this full combustion chamber immediately on all sides and two spark plugs with a very efficient and good burn and clean burn as well. So it's a very efficient motorcycle in that regard. You get that uh, delivery very crisp and clean. Obviously EFI is gonna be a little more responsive than a carb, arguably, right? But uh, you don't have to do the choke. You don't have to do any of that. You just fired it right up. So that's the beauty of the Mikuni injection system on this motorcycle with the with the throttle bodies that fill all sides of the chamber. The chamber is a hemispherical style chamber so that's something new that Yamaha did for this motorcycle as well. Two valves per cylinder and in comparison to my Warrior bikes I've owned two and I loved both of them just an amazing motorcycle take a look at that review. The intake valve was actually increased by two millimeters I think 36 from 34 and the exhaust valve by three so 31 as opposed to the warriors 28 however the piston was reduced by two millimeters and that was done for the purposes of keeping weight down and reciprocating mass and just making it uh, move quicker and easier inside and there is actually oiling that's being sprayed on the bottom of that piston so that uh, it keeps it cool very very interesting intelligent design and with these redesigned fins that catch the air it actually makes the motorcycle quite quite manageable in stop and go traffic I didn't, I didn't feel too much heat not a lot of vibration honestly it is a dry sump lubrication system which means there's no oil pan in the bottom that keeps the center of gravity low and it keeps the oil pan first for Yamaha on this motorcycle bolted to the frame it uh, what that allows you to do is to create or, or to have more oil circulating the system uh, there's pumps that drop instead of a drip style there's uh, the scavenge pump and the return pump etc and they push the oil throughout the engine and uh, keep the engine cool so because there's more oil there there's uh, more cooling effect of that oil it stays cooler the temperature remains uh, more stable than on a wet sump system meaning the the style that has the oil pin on the bottom of the engine um, numerous numerous benefits uh, prevents the sloshing that introduces air in the oil that makes it less lubricating and also it prevents the viscosity from affecting the moving parts as much because the oils contained not at the bottom of the case but on, on a totally separate system and being pushed through very very smart and I really like that of course it does have an oil cooler in the front and uh, I haven't experienced any issues with with too much heat. It does have this gorgeous two-in-one exhaust and the honeycomb design inside the catalytic converter does keep the tone gorgeous and honestly I would not change it. I love the deep V-twin sound and has this beautiful big long exhaust unlike the Warrior which has an incredibly unappealing original exhaust. So take a look at my reviews. Both my Warriors had aftermarket pipes that were so much more appealing than the really horrendously ugly original pipes that are on there. There's that for the exhaust. Again, belt driven rear wheel and a very attractive aluminum double cradle frame with a aluminum swing arm. And uh, very attractive mag style wheels keeps the whole construction rigid and I believe very very attractive. Five-speed transmission uh, gives you everything you need. This was also Yamaha's first take on the famous 
made by Harley, right? Famous uh, teardrop style gas tank. I spoke about the Harley teardrop in its first iteration in the amazing knucklehead, 1936 to 47 knucklehead. I've had the pleasure of reviewing a 1939 knucklehead and that's the first time this kind of design has been as you can see There's no welds anywhere. It's just a beautiful beautiful single cap design Everything is kind of hidden away. You don't even see the ignition here uh, You can you can basically hide it by the slider very very beautiful design again um, Ultimate in luxury and fit and finish from Yamaha with this gorgeous dual tone of black with a pinstriping separating the maroon color Really, really gorgeous motorcycle altogether. I'm not a huge fan of how these cables are so visible. If you saw my review of the Indian Scout, there's not a single cable visible anywhere. A little bit under a seat though, but uh, yeah, no welds. Just one solid piece of bike as if it was chiseled out of something solid it's just incredible huge leather seat uh, very very comfortable leaves nothing to be desired in that regard I mean you could cruise all day and again I actually do like the the mustache style um, uh, handlebars <clears throat> The suspension is a little bit soft, I think, undersprung for a motorcycle of this heft, in my opinion. It's a 46, I believe, millimeter front fork, and uh, it's inverted. You don't see that, though, because it's all hidden underneath this uh, uh, chrome that's still in miraculously great shape for being a beach bike for its 80,000 mile lifespan and, uh, you know, pushing 18 years now. But uh, all the chrome, as you can see, is in, in great shape. I like everything other than these plastic little accents here although I do love how the front fender aluminum I guess fender uh, does metal in any case does um, kind of swoop towards the rear it gives that that luxurious look kind of like the Indian motorcycles are known for so uh, you could really customize this bike to your heart's desire the brakes do a great job in stopping this motorcycle 298 millimeter fronts uh, featuring four pistons on the dual calipers and a 320 millimeter rear rotor. I've had the pleasure of experiencing the stopping power of this motorcycle today after a lady uh, skipped the yellow line twice nonetheless. doesn't have ABS this particular model but uh, it actually stopped quite controllable and uh, didn't really cause a lot of heartache in that regard could have been an ugly day but uh, the bike really really stops well and even when you apply the rear brake it's it's a lot of feel from what you get on these uh, floating rubber kind of uh, teardrop style foot pegs really really comfortable it isolates the, the vibration which again is not very excessive at all I, I haven't really noticed the vibration on this bike and again it's not very loud so it's not a fatiguing motorcycle in that regard now if you want a little more performance from a 1900 cc Yamaha twin you could go with the Raider really gorgeous gorgeous motorcycle but again I found my warrior 1700 cc motorcycles to be very very sufficient when it comes to that uh, that feeling you get from the v-twin muscle cruiser I wouldn't classify this as a muscle cruiser but definitely it has been tuned to keep a smile on your face I think for this kind of weight the uh, nothing less in terms of power and power delivery and torque would suffice so it's uh, once you twist the throttle it's very predictable uh, it's not very choppy but it's definitely tamer than the warrior and rightly so it's a different class of motorcycles altogether the brake levers themselves have been uh, widened and a hydraulic system delivers the power Power, braking power that you need for a motorcycle like this instead of cable all the cables again have been hidden in this this really really attractive handlebar 
You get a classic style speedometer in the middle here. This one actually is kind of uh, problematic because it does accumulate moisture on top, which started to affect the tachometer, which is not uh, always properly functioning. But it really is a gorgeous, gorgeous thing to look at here in the front, uh, although it does take your eyes off the road a little bit. But you know, when you remove the, the, the windscreen and if you had different bars on here, the line is so sleek and so attractive with this gorgeous big headlight in the front. I believe they're a 51 watt bulb and another one is 55. What appealed to me most always for these motorcycles is these gorgeous lines here, the, the, the 3D stripes that arc back on the the era of the 50s and the 60s car design think of the space race and all those kinds of lines pulling back i really really like that it's very identifiable the luggage itself is really really attractive it's full-blown leather and again key to the bike and it's actually very deep uh, not very deep but very long in that regard so it makes it quite useful i can actually store my tripod that I'm using for the filming here which is really nice keeps the design very sleek and smooth and I actually prefer that over square luggage that you can see on competitors like the Road King for example from Harley there it is thank you for watching i hope this quick and dirty review was useful if you're looking for one uh, and you are happy with a bike that's a little more tame in performance that's not a muscle cruiser but that does not lack the power to maneuver and to push in front of the traffic if it's a bike that you want to uh, keep for a long time and enjoy looking at this is this is a, a no-brainer it's it's a great bike again 80,000 miles not a not a drop of oil leaking from this thing just a, a very very well built machine and um, if you find one they're actually not very expensive at all it's a very specific market that looks for these big big custom looking cruisers and uh, it's, it's, it's still the case that Harley Davidson tends to uh, take that market and uh, the values of Harleys are always going to be uh, much higher than what you get from a very competitively priced Yamaha Stratoliner. Thanks again. Stay safe. Until next time. Nick, I'm out.